Thank you, Patrick. So we're going to do tax policy in three minutes, uh, and we're going to start with adequacy. Uh, so, and we'll get that slide going, adequacy, and we're going to look at Oregon taxes, ex uh, state and local, expressed as a share of the economy or total personal income. And you can see that since 1977, we've averaged about 10 percent. Uh, and we've uh, gone up and down. We've been as high as 11%, as low as 9.3, and then in 2013 back uh, to the 10% average. But it's also important to pay attention to what's called general revenue. So that would add in fees and charges, uh, tuition and the lottery, et cetera. That gets us up to about 16% of total personal income. So in essence, what's going on in state and local government, uh, Oregonians are spending about 16 cents on the dollar uh, for state and uh, local services. Now, how does that compare to the United States average? Uh, how does that compare? There we go. Uh, uh, here you can see that uh, oh, oh, we've uh, changed over time here, but in 2013, with respect to taxes, uh, we're very close to the US average as a share of our total personal income. On revenue, we're a little bit higher. Now I'm going to shift gears, and I'm going to talk about taxes per capita. Taxes per capita is the total amount of taxes uh, divided by the population in the state and how that compares. And here you can see uh, that we started at about $3,000 uh, per capita in 1977, and by 2013, we were up to $3,900. That's in, uh, adjusted for inflation. How does that compare to the U.S. average? You can see we've fallen behind the U.S. average, and you're saying, John, you just told me we were at the U.S. average, and I'm saying we're not in this particular indicator because our per capita income is below the U.S. average. That means that we have less economy to tax per person uh, than the typical state, and so our tax code uh, put in different states would generate more money. So that's the story on adequacy. Now we're going to move uh, to the notion of stability, and I will sum it up with one slide. If you've lived in Oregon over the course of the last 10 to 15 years, you have been on this ride. Uh, and uh, it is driven by the fact that we uh, concentrate our taxes on uh, personal income, corporate income, and capital gains, much less so on consumption. Uh, and we have a boom-bust uh, revenue system. So that was, uh, that's the stability story. Uh, now on to the last topic here of equity. Uh, Oregon has what you would call a proportional tax system. That means that families at different levels of income generally spend the same shares of their income, somewhere between 7 to 8 percent, uh, on state and local taxes. I will now compare that to the state of Washington, which is the most regressive uh, system of taxation in the United States. Uh, we're going to finish now with two slides. The first one here, if you've been around since Labor Day, you're familiar with this one, Measure 97, and Oregon's business taxation uh, at the tail end of that distribution. Why is that? Uh, we are very similar to other states with respect to many forms of business taxation, corporate income taxes, uh, property taxes, unemployment insurance, excise, license taxes, and the like. Where the difference comes in, is in sales taxes. So when businesses buy equipment or materials to do the work that they do, they don't have to pay sales taxes. So that's the big difference. So Patrick, there you have it. Oregon tax policy in three minutes. Thank you, John.